Welcome to the session on Introduction to World Theatre. We shall be handling Roman theatre in this session. Ancient Roman theatre includes a wide variety of artistic performances from street theatre, acrobatics, the staging of Plotus' situation comedies to verbally elaborate tragedies of Seneca. Though Rome has its own traditional style of performance, the Hellenization of Roman culture in the 3rd century BC radically influenced and changed Roman literature and art to a large extent. This might have simultaneously brought severe changes in Roman theatre too. Renowned Roman poet Juvenal once said that his fellow Romans were only interested in bread and circuses. Their prime interest was in their stomachs and their entertainment. Literary and archaeological sources of the period give detailed insights into one aspect of their public entertainment, that is, theatre. The first permanent theatre building in Rome is the Theatre of Pompeii in Campus Martius. There were theatres before this, but normally such theatres were dismantled at the end of the festival for which it was erected. This theatre was inaugurated in 55 BC with the display of Greek and Oscan plays, horse races, athletic and musical contests and we nations including a spectacular elephant hunt. Later, in the 2nd century BC, three more permanent theatres were started and was constructed but it was never completed. Richard C. Beecham in his work, The Roman Theatre and its Audience writes about the stages of this period as stages were presumably erected for the various annual scenic games. Since the historians recording the period pass over such recurrent constructions, there are grounds for believing that the structures they specifically mention were in some way special. In the first century AD, Roman style theatres were constructed. Regarding the newly constructed design of Roman theatre, Margaret Bieber mentions that the rounded form of the auditorium had the division into tyres by means of semicircular passageways and into wedge-shaped sections by means of the radially ascending stairs. During the period 509 to 27 BC, Roman Republic expanded its territories into Greece and it is in this period that Rome encountered Greek drama. From there onwards, the concept of full-length drama emerged in Roman theatre. The history of the Roman theatre is intricately linked with that of its greatest influence, the Greek drama. But some scholars also pointed that by dating the various archaeological findings, historians are also able to gain an understanding of the evolution of Roman theatre, stretching from the early dances to the mimes and pantomimes, to the more highly plotted works of playwrights. One of the primary writers who contributed to Roman theatre is Livius Andronicus, who wrote from 240 BC and is famous for his tragedies and comedies. After five years, Gnaeus Navius also began to write dramas, but unfortunately, none of the plays by these writers have survived. Though these two writers wrote both tragedies and comedies, Andronicus was largely appreciated for his tragedies and Navius for his comedies. But in the later years of development of Roman drama, successors of these two writers specialized themselves in comedy or in tragedy. This subsequently led to a separation of each type of drama. By the beginning of the 2nd century BC, drama was firmly established in Rome and a guild of writers had been formed. Among the Roman comedies, only comedies based on Greek subjects survived. These dramas are named as Fabula Palliata. The two major dramatists of this genre of the time were Titus Massius Plotus or in short known as Plotus and Publius Terentius Afer, or he was known as Terence. From the remnants of surviving early Greek plays, such as those of Menander and those of two esteemed Roman playwrights, Plotus and Terence, 
historians believe Greek themes and characters influence the characters and storylines of Roman plays. Plotus and Terence uses stock characters seen in Greek theatre. On the other hand, Roman comic dramatists reworked the Greek originals radically. They abolished the role of the chorus that was used in Greek drama mainly for dividing the drama into episodes. Instead, they introduced musical accompaniment to its dialogue. The action of all scenes is set in the exterior location of a street where people can gather comfortably. Roman commentators of the time also commented on the similarities of the Greek and Roman theatre. For instance, Cicero described Roman comedy as fabellas latinas ad verbum de gracias expressas. Or it meant plays in Latin, literally translated from the Greek. The Romans also seem to have incorporated the Greeks' use of masks and costumes. Plotus, the more popular of the two, wrote between 205 and 184 BC. Though he wrote plenty of dramatic works, only 20 of his comedies survived. Among these plays, his farces are the best literary pieces. Terence, between 166 and 160 BC, wrote about six comedies and all of them have survived. He used to make complex plots by combining Roman as well as Greek stories. Most of the Roman tragedies were lost. Some of the few plays that historians know are of three early tragedians. Quintus Aeneas, Marcus Passuvius and Lucius Axius. During the time of the Roman Empire, the works of two tragedians survives. One is an unknown author, while the other is the Stoic philosopher Seneca. Nine of Seneca's tragedies survive. All these nine tragedies are adapted from Greek originals and are named as Fabula Crepidata. For example, his play Phaedra was based on Euripides' Hippolytus. The few surviving copies of Roman plays have enabled further understanding of the aspects of Roman theatre. Plautus's works are considered the earliest complete form of Latin literature discovered. Plautus, in his work The Rope and Other Plays, this was translated into English by E. F. Watling, it points out that from the studying uh, the works of these playwrights and assuming their works uh, to be typical of the time, historians can derive ideas about the basic themes prolific in Roman theatre, those of love, life and misfortune. We can also determine some idea of what Roman audiences would have liked. Both Plautus and Terence wrote comedies, suggesting that it was with these that the playwrights found favour with their audience. Surviving play texts indicate four recognised genres in Roman theatre. Fabula Palliata, which incorporated Greek dress and mannerisms. Fabula Atalana, a comedic genre which included characters such as clowns. Fabula Pretextata, serious plays with legendary, historical or contemporary events as themes and Fabula Lotogeta, which had a comic domestic setting. Some plays also occasionally included the interference of Roman gods as seen in Plautus's work Amphitrio, which supports the general ideas of the way the Romans worshipped their divine figures. Following the Greek Dionysius, the patron god of the Roman theatre was Bacchus, whose love of wine and lewdness perhaps alludes to the body nature of many Roman dramatic forms. Many plays appear to have been connected to the gods. They were often performed during the rituals and festivals of a particular community celebrating a particular deity. Later, playwrights used to write about the real-life situation in the Roman countrysides. 
studying such elements as the characters and actors of Roman plays gives historians insight into Roman society, classes and social status and the way the theatre might reflect it. The plays themselves show evidence of a variety of characters and yet it seems that there are a few stock characters who keep returning. The tragic female, the clown and the deceiving or weary slave amongst them. The reappearance of certain characters may mirror features or even tensions of Roman society. A scheming slave is a recurring character in dramas of those times. Perhaps such a figure was a common occurrence in real life and so was written into place to evoke emotion and understanding within the audience. Within each role, there seem to be several variations portrayed by their masks. An excerpt from the writings of Lulius Pollux in the 2nd century AD shows a variety of roles. The slave's comic masks are a grandfather, upper slave, thin head behind, bristly slave, a curled slave, a middle slave, foppish slave and shaking upper slave. Actors though it appears may come from low class backgrounds and could become famous in a Roman society like the writers of the plays they performed and could even gain improved social status and then presumably wealth too through their success on the stage. Surviving archaeological evidence suggests that women actors were never a part of later Roman theatre. Instead, their parts are played by men. Phyllis Hartnell, in his work A Concise History of the Theatre, states that there is some evidence to suggest that women played a role in the earlier forms of Roman theatre, such as mimes and pantomimes. In surviving artworks depicting later Roman actors from around the times of plot-driven plays such as Plotus and Terence, the female roles are seen to be played by men, some perhaps wearing or holding a female mask or costume. This indicates the limited condition role of women in Roman society. From architectural evidence, such as the remains of Roman theatre structures, historians can determine how Roman plays were performed and gain an indication of the size and social status of the audience who attended the theatre. In the 18th chapter of Peter Brown's The First Roman Literature, there is a reference regarding one of the most intact and well-known remnants of a Roman theatre that stands in Pompeii. Constructed during the 2nd century BC, the structure is the earliest surviving theatre in Italy, outside the Greek colonies. Widespread archaeological evidence suggests that almost every significant town had a theatre of some sort. Everything were outdoors, or rather it was unroofed, and some historians speculate that some theatres may have had an awning to protect the audience from the sun. We can gain information about the ways plays were performed from the structural evidence and also from the architectural texts of the time, such as the Ten Books of Architecture by Marcus Vitruvius Pollio, written between 16 and 13 BC. Pollio wrote about the structure of Roman theatre stage as the scena, that is the scenes or the backdrop itself displays the following scheme, scheme or scene. In the centre, there are double doors, decorated like those of a royal palace. At the right and left are doors of the guest chambers. Beyond are spaces left for decoration. This is quoted in A.M. Nagler's A Source Book in Theatrical History. The same writer also described the use of three kinds of scenes, the tragic, the comic and the satiric. From this, we can deduce that the Romans were proactive in experimenting varied theatrical styles and forms in their earlier performances itself. 
It is also possible to determine the different class of the audience from the seating as some seating is closer to the stage with a better viewing position. Presumably for the upper classes while other seating is plain presumably for the lower classes of society. Which reviewers also describes a pattern for tired seating. Bone tokens have been found which may have been used as tickets suggesting an organized system of entry and seating and possibly of payment too. It is difficult to determine who went to the theatre. Though comments from Juvenile, a writer of the time may cast some light on this. I quote, The ordinary Roman found great drama less uplifting than a tightrope walker. This is stated in the Unger Hamilton, The Entertainers. This would seem to correlate with the abundant evidence which suggests the popularity of circuses and with the well-documented archaeological and literary evidence of the broader and often violent mass audience entertainment of the amphitheatres such as the Colosseum during this period in Rome. To conclude, both literary and archaeological evidence proves that there existed a well-established system of theatre and play production in ancient Rome. Through investigation of contemporary plays and social commentaries and through the discovery of related artworks and architectural structures, theatre historians have learned something about the history and development of Roman theatre, the plays and playwrights of the time, the actors and characters of the plays and the theatre themselves. Also, these inquiries into Roman theatre would simultaneously give information about the Roman society and its socio-political undercurrents. Now let us summarize the session. The theatre of ancient Rome was a thriving and diverse art form ranging from festival performances of street theatre, new dancing and acrobatics to appealing situation comedies to verbally elaborate tragedies. Although Rome had a native tradition of performance, the Hellenization of Roman culture in the 3rd century BC had restructured Roman theatre into a different level. This session explores Roman theatre as a whole and details its origin and development in detail. It begins with the information regarding architectural details of Roman theatre. It also gives details about various dramatists and different genres in ancient Roman theatre. Before we move to the next session, please try to answer the following questions. Prepare a chart regarding the major authors of ancient Rome. Also include their major work. Collect pictures of ancient Roman theatre from internet and other sources. This should include pictures of amphitheatre, ancient Roman stage, character sketches, costumes and pictures of ancient performance. Critically analyze the difference between Roman comedy and Roman tragedy and list them in a tabular form. Write an essay about the Hellenization of Roman theatre. Let me now suggest some books for your reference. The Roman Theatre and its Audience by Richard Beecham published by Harvard University Press in 1991. A short history of the drama written by Martha Bellinger and published by Henry Holt and Company, 1927. The Uncompleted Theatres of Rome by Constance Campbell brought out by Theatre Journal in March 2003. A Concise History of the Theatre by Norwich and Thames and Hudson, published in 1968 and written by Felis Hartnell. A source book in theatrical history, written by A. M. Nagler and published by Dover Publications in 1952. The Rope and Other Plays by Plotus, translated by E. F. Watling and brought out by Penguin Books in 1964. The Entertainers by Clive Unger Hamilton, published by Harrow House Editions Limited in 1980. 
with that we come to the end of the session i hope it was useful for you until we meet again it's a bye from here